Okay, here's the video for the Unit 6A Quadratics Practice Test. So it says, use the graph to identify the properties listed for the function, estimate if necessary. All right, so starting with the vertex, we know that the vertex is either the maximum or the minimum point of the parabola, which is right here. And the coordinates for that point is going to be negative 1, 4. Uh, the zeros are the x-intercepts. So where the parabola crosses the x-axis, so it crosses in two places. So my first zero or x-intercept is negative 3, comma, 0. And the second is 1, comma, 0. My y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So it crosses here, and we need to write that as an ordered pair as well. So that's going to be 0, 3. The axis symmetry is a vertical line that cuts the parabola in half. And it's also going to be the x-coordinate of my vertex. So since it crosses at negative 1, my axis symmetry is going to be x equals negative 1. For domain, we think of all the possible x values for this function. So remember that this quadratic is going to get infinitely wide, which means our uh, domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive, inf positive infinity. And then in terms of range, we look for the uh, how low our parabola goes. So since our parabola is continuing on forever down, we know that the lower bound is going to be negative infinity, and the highest my parabola goes is up to 4. So negative infinity to 4. The other way we could write that is y is less than or equal to 4. All right, the second problem, same idea. So starting with the vertex, uh, in this case it's an absolute minimum. The coordinates of that is going to be negative 1, negative 4. Zeros are my x-intercepts, so they cross, uh, it has two x-intercepts, so it looks like it's going to be negative 2.5 comma 0, and the other one's going to be maybe 0 0.5 comma 0. My y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, so it crosses at negative 2, which means my y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 2. My axis symmetry is the vertical line that cuts my parabola in half. Um, in that case, it's going to be x equals negative 1. My domain, just like with the previous one, we know that our parabola gets infinitely wide, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity. And lastly, my range, the lowest my parabola goes is negative 4, and the highest it goes since it continues on forever up is going to be to infinity. Uh, the other way we can write this is y is greater than or equal to negative 4, since all the y values are greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, so the next problem says uh, the following graph models the height and feet of a diver um, over time in seconds. Use the graph to answer the following question. So what is the initial height of the diver right before he jumps? So the initial height is basically what is a height when time is equal to zero? So the initial height of the diver um, is three. So that's going to be three feet. Um, and this point on the parabola is our y-intercept. So how many seconds does it take the diver to reach the water? Well, the diver reaches the water at this point, uh, which means it takes three seconds. And that point on the parabola is called an x-intercept, or a zero. So notice this parabola actually has two x-intercepts. However, the only one that makes sense in this context is this point, since this is at negative one seconds, and negative time doesn't make sense. What is the maximum height of the diver? What is that point on the, called on the parabola? So this is where the diver meets, meets their maximum height. Um, and remember that the y-axis is height, so that's going to be uh, 4 feet. And that point is called the vertex. And it says, how long will it take the diver to reach his maximum height? Well, he reaches his maximum height at this point, 1 second. And we can call that point, uh, or that, that part of the parabola, maybe the axis of symmetry. But we can also say that the vertex tells us that as well. All right, the next problem, it says a rocket is launched from a building 100 meters off the ground. It travels in the path of a parabola. So I'm going to sketch a picture. It's starting off the ground. It's launched, and it hits the ground. The rocket travels a maximum height of 180 meters. So we know this point is going to be something comma 180. When it is a horizontal distance of 4 feet away from the starting point. So that point is going to be 4, 180. 
So it's use a given characteristics to write a function to represent the height. So we're going to be writing an equation. So the other point that we have is its starting point. And remember that was at 100. So this point is going to be 0, 100. So in this problem, we're given the vertex, which means that we should write this equation in vertex form, which is a x minus h squared plus k. Well, since we have the vertex, we know that we can plug in h for h and k for k. And then we're going to need to work backwards to solve for a. So uh, we also have an x value that we can plug in, um, as well as a y value that we can plug in for f of x. So our function is going to look something like this. It's going to be f of x equals a x minus 4 squared plus 180. So now we're going to plug in our point. So plugging in our point, we have uh, 100 equals a 0 minus 4 squared plus 180. So simplifying here, we're going to simplify the parentheses and exponent first. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4, and negative 4 squared is 16. So we have uh, 16a plus 180 is equal to 100. Now we're going to subtract 180 from both sides. So we have negative 80 equals 16a. And then the last step, we're going to divide both sides by 16. And when we divide, we get a is equal to negative 5. So now we can write our function. It's going to be f of x equals, now we're going to plug in negative 5, x minus 4 squared plus 180. All right, next problem says, DOG is a leaping dog standing on a two-foot tall platform. He jumps from the platform, catches a toy, uh, eight feet in the air, which is his maximum height when he's a horizontal distance of one foot away from his starting point. Um, and then we're going to write the equation. So again, the dog is starting off the ground. He's going to jump into the air and land. Well, we know his starting point. His starting point, he's standing on a two-foot tall platform, which means this point is going to be 0, 2. We also know his maximum height. His maximum height is 8 feet. And that happens when he is uh, one foot away from his starting point. So the coordinate to this point is going to be 1, 8. And this is our vertex. And we know that because it's a maximum point. So just like the previous problem, we're going to write this one in vertex form. So I'm going to plug in my vertex. It's going to be x minus 1 squared plus 8. So to solve, we need to also plug in um, our other point. So we have an x value. We have a y value, so we're going to plug that in to solve for a. So it's going to be 2 is equal to a, 0 minus 1 squared plus 8. So again, simplifying inside the parentheses, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. So this, this whole term just is an a. So we have a plus 8 is equal to 2. And then we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So we have negative 4 is equal to a. So now I have my function, f of x. I have my a value is negative 4. And then it's going to be x minus 1 squared plus 8. All right. Next problem says Alex, a soccer player, rushes 10 meters down the field, kicks the ball into the air, lands 25 feet from him. So in this problem, we have someone who's running, kicks the ball in the air, and the ball lands. So the first significant point is uh, where he kicks the ball, um, and that's where after he runs 10 meters. So that's going to be 10-0, and that's an x-intercept. And then it tells us that the ball lands 20 feet from him. Well, if he's standing at 10, 25 feet from him is going to be at 35, comma, 0, since we're counting from where he kicked the ball. So we have our x-intercepts. Um, it also tells us that when the ball is 2 feet from him, so 2 feet away would be at 12, the ball is 11.5 feet in the air. So the coordinates of this point is going to be 12, comma, 11.5. 
Um, we don't know if that's the maximum. It doesn't state that it's the maximum, because so we're going to assume that it's not. We also can tell that it's not the maximum, because we know the maximum point would have to happen halfway between 10 and 35. And if we're only two feet from 10, we know we're not halfway. So that's how I know it's not the maximum point. All right, so for this one, uh, since we're not given the vertex or the maximum point, that means we're going to write this equation in factored form. So f of x is equal to a, and we're going to use our 0. So it's going to be x minus 10 and x minus 35. Then we have to use this other point, so we're going to plug in 12 for x. And notice we're plugging it in in two places, and we're going to plug in 11.5 for f of x in order to solve for a. So we're left with 11.5 equals a 12 minus 10 and 12 minus 35. All right, so simplifying this, we have 11.5 is equal to a 12 minus 10 is 2. And then 12 minus 35, I need to use a calculator. Uh, so 12 minus 35 is negative 23. And then we're going to multiply. So 2 times negative 23 gives me negative 46 is equal to 11.5. And then the last step, divide both sides by negative 46. we get negative 0.25 is our value for A. So remember, once we have that value for A, since we're asking, it's asking to write a function, we need to plug that value back in for A into our original function, and that's going to be our answer. So our final answer is f of x is equal to negative 0.25, x minus 10, and x minus 35. All right, so then we have the last one. We still have our leaping dog is competing. So it runs, says he runs five feet, then leaps through, through a hula hoop, three foot high hula hoop that is one foot away from his leaping point. Then it says that he lands six feet away from the hula hoop. Okay, so he runs, jumps, and lands. So the first significant point is where he jumps, um, and that's five feet from his starting point. So the coordinates of that point is five feet. The next significant point is where he jumps to the hula hoop. So it says uh, it's one foot away from his leaping point, so at six, and the hula hoop is three feet in the air. So the coordinate points of this point is six comma three. Um, and then it says it land, he lands six feet away from the hula hoop. So the hula hoop was at six, so six feet from that would be at 12. So the coordinates would be 12, zero. All right, so just like the previous one, we don't have the vertex, which means that we're going to write this in factored form. So again, we don't know what a is, but it's going to be x minus 5, x minus 12. And then we're given this last point, so we're going to plug in 6 for x, and we're going to plug in 3 for f of x, and we're going to uh, do a little bit of algebra to solve for a. So it's going to be 3 is equal to a. 6 minus 5, and 6 minus 12. So 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 minus 12 is negative 6. And then multiplication, we say 3 is equal to uh, 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, so negative 6a. And then to get a by itself, divide both sides by negative 6. So 3 divided by negative 6 is negative 0.5. Just like before, our final answer, we need to plug in a to our original equation. So f of x is equal to negative 0.5, x minus 5, x minus 12. Okay, so now working with problem number 8, we're looking at the graph and we're explaining why or why not it could not model the graph. Describe, describe your reasoning. So starting with this first equation, f of x equals 3, x minus 1, x minus 5. So this function has two x-intercepts at 1 and 5. However, when looking at our graph, this graph doesn't have any uh, x-intercepts. 
since this is, since it doesn't have any x-intercepts, we know that this cannot be a function. So no, because the graph has no x-intercepts. All right, number two, or the second one, it says 2x plus 6 squared minus 5. So this is written in uh, vertex form. So we know the concavity is correct since it's concave up. The vertex for this one would be at negative 6, negative 5. But when we look at this vertex, we know that the x and the y value is positive for our vertex. So this could not be the function. So I'm going to say no because the graph has a positive x and y for the vertex. All right, number three, this is written in standard form, so the concavity is correct. And then when we look at the y-intercept, this has a positive y-intercept when we look at this graph. So even though we can't see the y-intercept here, um, we know that it's going to be somewhere positive. Okay, so this would work, yes, because the concavity is correct. And the graph has a positive y-intercept. Right, next one, so again this is factored form, um, which if we have a parabola that doesn't have any x-intercepts we can't write it in factored form. So I'm going to say no um, because the graph has no x-intercepts. So same reasoning as the problem right above it. All right, next one. Um, again, looking at the concavity, that's correct. This has a vertex at 6, 5, which could possibly be this vertex. So I'm going to say yes, because the concavity is up and vertex is positive x positive y, which is the case for this one. All right, last one. Um, this is written in standard form. So basing our decision based just based off the concavity, this could not, could not be a graph. So no, because the graph is concave up. Um, and this particular graph uh, is concave down. All right. Uh, 9 through 14, we're going to list the characteristics and write an equation for each parabola. So starting with number 9, it says opens downward and has x-intercepts. So if we have x-intercepts, we know that we are doing this in factored form. So um, instead of writing out my explanation, I'm just going to say it verbally. We know that our a value needs to be negative, so we can pick any negative value, so maybe negative 2. And then plugging in our x-intercepts, we know the signs are opposite, so x plus 9 and x minus 3. Uh, number 10, it says opens upward and has x-intercepts at 2, 0, 4, 0. So again, factored form. So f of x opens upward. So we're just going to pick a positive value. It's going to be x minus 2 and x minus 4. So again, switching the signs for the x-intercepts when we plug it into the equation. Number 11, opens upward and has a vertex at negative 8, 3. So vertex, meaning we should write it in vertex form. It's opening upward, so we need to pick a positive number, so maybe I'll just pick 11, so this is problem number 11. And then when we plug in our vertex, we know it's the opposite sign, x plus 8 squared minus 3, and k, oh, not minus 3, plus 3. Uh, k stays the same sign. Uh, number 12, again, vertex form, so f of x is opening downward, so I'm going to say it's negative 2. It could be any negative value. x minus 9. Again, switching the sign for h, but keeping the sign for k. All right, number 13, opens upward and has a y-intercept. So when we're specifying a y-intercept, that means we should write it in standard form. Opening upward, so any positive value for a. b can be whatever you want. Um, and then we have a y-intercept at 0, 8, so plus 8 at the end. And then number 14, opening downward. And it's specifying a y-intercept, so again, standard form. So I'm going to say negative 3x squared. Again, b can be whatever, so negative, I'll say plus 
2x, um, and then a y-intercept would be minus 15 at the end. All right, problem number 15, it says that we're going to convert it to the two other forms, then identify the characteristics of the parabola. So first, let's identify the characteristics based off of what it looks like now. So this is in standard form. So in standard form, I know the concavity, which is going to be up since A is positive. Um, and we know the y-intercept um, is going to be 0, 16. We look at um, c the c value for our y-intercept. So now let's convert this to factored form. In order to convert it to factored form, we need to factor it. So my GCF is 2. So we're going to divide everything by 2. So we get x squared minus 6x um, plus 8. And then we're going to factor this a little more. So we know that we can break this down into two parentheses. Um, and remember, when there's no value in front of x squared, um, we can pretty quickly factor this. We know that this has to be x and x. And then we're just looking for two numbers that multiply to make 8. That adds to make negative 6. So 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. So the only one that we can use to make a negative 6 is 2 and 4 if they're both negative. So there it is in factored form. So f of x equals 2, x minus 2, x minus 4. Um, and now that we've put it in factored form, we now have our x-intercept. So it's going to be 2, 0, and 4, 0. All right, now let's put it in vertex form. So we have a couple different options for vertex form. We're going to find the vertex, and we can do that from standard form. So I'm going to do negative b over 2a. So it's going to be negative, negative 12 over 2 times a. So this is 12 over 4, which is 3. So my axis symmetry is x equals 3. And that means I have half of my vertex. And now we're just going to plug in 3 for x to get the y value of my vertex. So we plug that in, put that in our calculator, we get negative 2. So the y value of my vertex is going to be negative 2. And now we can write it in vertex form. So we're going to use the same a value, which in all three cases is going to be 2. And now plugging in my vertex. So it's going to be x minus 3 squared and then minus 2 at the end. All right, so now looking at number 16. So 16 is written in vertex form. Vertex form is going to tell us the concavity. So just like before, um, we look at the a value, this is going to be concave up. It tells us our vertex, so we're going to look at h and k. Remember, it's the opposite sign for h, so it's going to be positive 4, and k is going to be negative 4. And then our axis symmetry is x equals h, so it's going to be x equals 4. All right, so now let's put it in standard form. So to write it in standard form, we basically need to multiply this out. So remember that we are going to expand this to x minus 4 times x minus 4. And we're going to multiply. So using distributive property, we have x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. And then remember, we have the minus 4 at the end. And combining like terms, we get x squared minus 8x. And we can do 16 minus 4, which is 12. So now we have it in standard form. And now that we have it in standard form, we have our y-intercept. So it's going to be 0, 12. All right, now to write it in factored form, we have to take this quadratic and factor it. Well, since there's no value in front of x squared, we know there's no GCF. So we know it's just going to factor into two binomials. Um, to multiply to make x squared, it's x and x. And then we're multiplying to make 12 and adding to make 8, negative 8. So 1 and 12. 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. The pair that's going to give us negative 8 is the 2 and the 6 if they're both negative. So that multiplies to make positive 12 and adds to make negative 8. So now I have it in factored form. And since I have it in factored form, I now have my x-intercept. So it's going to be 2, 0, and 6, 0. All right, now with our last one, uh, we have it in factored form. So in factored form, we know the concavity. This one's going to be up again since uh, the a value is positive. We also have our x-intercepts. So 8, 0, and uh, negative 7, 0. To write it in standard form, we're going to go ahead and multiply. 
So x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. So I have x squared minus x minus 56. So here it is in standard form. And now I have my y-intercept. Now to get it in vertex form, I need to find my vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my x-intercepts to find my vertex. And to do that, remember, we're finding the midpoint of these. So we're going to do 8 plus negative 7 divided by 2. So that's 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5. So my axis symmetry is x equals 0.5. And then to find uh, the y value of my vertex, we're going to plug in 0.5 for x. So it's going to be 0.5 minus 8 times 0.5 plus 7, which gives me negative 56.25. So in vertex form, it's going to be x minus 0.5 squared minus 56.25.